hit the top of the hour. Right there. Uh, it is officially 10 o'clock at the Giant Granite Phallus in the District of Cr Criminals, ladies and gentlemen. And I will try to present... Fuck it. We ball. What? It's Friday night open lines. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio. Friday, May 3rd, 2024. I am the Drizzle. Returning champion Rob is already on the line, and we are awaiting your phone call as well. The link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel and sprinkled into other conspicuous places. I imagine that we will have uh, more colorful voices as the night goes on, uh, but you never know who's going to show up, right, Rob? Never know, Drizzle. How you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm broken. I was uh, doing some gardening work and uh, got a truck stuck in the middle of my yard and uh, spent most of the day carrying buckets of dirt from one side of the yard to the other to lighten the load. A lot of fun. A lot of shoveling, cursing, backbreaking. <laughs> it sounds like it. Man. Well, I'm I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. And, uh, and I'm also glad to hear that because, again, hard work uh, does a whole lot of things for you, not just help you get a good night's sleep once you get there. Yeah, and this hard work will get me some more uh, fruit and vegetables growing. So. Boom. There you go. That's what it's all about in 2024. I'm, I'm becoming more and more assured of that every single day that as, as we move forward into the future – your net worth is going to be uh, directly related to the amount of edible food stuff that you personally can generate. Yeah, I mean, stop paying the tax man your bill and see how free you are. They take all your shit and lock you into a cage. Yeah. Pub publicly shame you. Oh, yeah. Gotta, gotta do the public humiliation ritual. Let's see who all is checking in on the live stream chat tonight. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, uh, we're not just broadcasting on all of the Liberty radio channels right now. Odyssey, Rumble, Twitter, Telegram. We're also broadcasting live on Radio8424.com right this very minute. Uh, we got to figure out how to get the call in link. To uh, to radio eighty four twenty four. I think I think I already have a solution for that problem. But I think those sure. folks should be able to call in too. What do you think, Rob? I think so too. Do you, um, doesn't Streamyard kick you like a fake number that you can call? Maybe. I don't know. I don't use Streamyard, so unfortunately, stream, I don't know stream, the uh, the answer to that labs. question. <laughs> it's not okay. a fake number. It's a uh, well. It's it's what you used it's just a web link right okay yeah but i can i can every single time i can generate a different link so it's like you can't the same link isn't going to work every single time maybe download the uh stream labs desktop client and put that on my machine for some reason it worked before without it huh interesting New features and upgrades, I guess. Who knows? Probably. They do a pretty good job with that, in my opinion. So Are what you, is um, uh, what is on your mind tonight, Rob? Well, I've been trying to um, disconnect from the clown show for like the last week. Hearing uh, all these stupid fake protests that uh, aren't representative of like the people's real feelings. It's like they always... You know, you're either a Hamas um, supporter or you're uh, a Zionist supporter. There's there's no gray area in between, according to the stupid media. So that stuff's just getting irritating. I'm uh, watching our uh, Congress critters all try to find new ways to silence speech. Uh, let's do it on the campuses now and uh, let's criminalize it. Why don't we? Because like, what says freedom, like criminalizing fucking words you say? Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, violating the First Amendment of the Constitution in the process, <laughs> like completely, like not even trying to hide it. It's just like, 
yeah, we just we got to do this now. It's it's time. It's time. Well, they're they're um it's mostly, run its course, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it wasn't it uh the musician uh Laurel Can Frank Zappa of Laurel Canyon fame who uh said that the illusion of freedom will go as lo- go on as long as it's profitable and then they'll pull the curtains back and you'll see the uh black wall at the back of the theater waiting for you. Yep. I think it's uh, we've about gotten to that time. Yeah, it seems to be more and more as they drum up this bullshit. Um, I don't know. I haven't been down in the middle of the protest, so I can only imagine what type of uh, people get injected in there, you know, the paid protesters, to shout slogans that they can put on the news and make everybody think that, oh, these people are just a bunch of anti-Semites. They don't, yeah. Well, I, don't I know. saw, what was it? I'm trying to remember where it was. There's, there's been so much floating around about the protests, right? A lot of speculation, not a lot of evidence, as usual. Uh, but somebody was, had uh, tried to estimate how many of the participants in the protests weren't even actually affiliated with the school at all, as in being either faculty or student. And they were saying it's probably somewhere around 50%. I'm that like, wow. Surprise me. Yeah. Well, any, that would almost any... make it look organic, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, if it was only 50%. It's like the same thing they do to every movement that gets popular support. Any type of thing that starts grassroots, it's just a matter of time before it's injected and taken over. I mean, look at the Black Lives Matter people. They went out and stole, extorted all that money in the name of social justice and bought themselves mansions and cars and jewelry and fucked the social justice part of it. You know, it's just, how slimy can you get? Well, not not even fuck the social justice part of it. It was also fuck the local chapter. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it, was, it was the national leadership that kept all the money that was donated and like the, the local chapters just got squat. You know, yeah, some of them just got completely ignored by leadership, from what I heard. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But um, every charity out there, you have to be skeptical and you have to like run it down to see how much is going to administration, how much is actually going to the cause that they're pretending. Like I heard years ago and then looked into it, like the Goodwill. Everybody thinks Goodwill. Oh, yeah, donate your stuff to Goodwill. It's a for-profit fucking business the guy doesn't give any of that money to charity he doesn't even pretend he does <laughs> yeah and it's uh i want to say it's exactly the same with the salvation army as well because i worked with them when i was young young like 1920 uh and there was there was definitely some shady shit going on in the background i worked in the uh the local thrift store yeah, then you got um like the American Way. Those people. Oh yeah. I the last job I had, they uh must have had some partnership with them for, you know, giving. And they would try to extort every employee. Like as soon as you started, you would start getting emails from them trying to extort donations from you. It's like, well, fortunately for me, I read about your uh organization. You guys spend like I think it's like ninety seven percent of their money goes to administration. Yep. Yep. Whole whole three percent is left over to uh, to do good work in the world. I was thinking more yeah, like besides tra- buying mansions and I was and thinking more like tra- travel and uh, business expenses for meals and hookers and massages. All that I, stuff. You got to entertain when you're in business, Rob. That's just the way it is. That's how it works. You know, um, something that was like jumped into the news for like not even like a day or two, probably like six months ago, maybe it was even longer when that uh, big prostitution ring that was serving political uh, people and corporate elites uh, based out of like Virginia and Massachusetts, they supposedly oh, had like yeah. a, the book with all the names. It was like a very, very detailed service it was no aliases people had to like give their real cell phone and ids to even be part of the service 
Can't imagine they were blackmailed Damn. for anything. <laughs> can't, can't imagine that was a bad idea when that vote came up and uh, you were really against it how did, until you were until you were for it. All right. So how? Why was that? Why was that even in the news to begin with? That's my question. Because uh, you're just, right. It was in the news and then it was gone. And nobody has talked about it since, except you, uh, tonight. Yeah, I know, right? What What do you think? It was one of those genies started coming out of the bottle and they like corked it back in because of the people involved? I mean, we still haven't got any Epstein clients. Who was a fuck about the list of who flew on his plane? What about the people who um, hung out in his New York mansion or his New Mexico baby breeding factory? Right. Right. What about the people who were visiting his island regularly? Yeah. People who didn't quite make the flight log because they right. might have just taken a boat. Or a submarine. <laughs> submarine. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Ghislaine had a license to pilot a submarine, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. I, heard, I think Epstein did as well. I heard it was a rumor that there was a submarine dock um, at the island, but... I don't think it's a rumor. I think it's actually a fact. Okay. I'll say rumor until I say it. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> in, in these days, you never even know. Well, I would be highly surprised if there wasn't, considering how much work Ghislaine did that revolved around the ocean. And the so fact maybe, that she, you know, that, like, that, was, that was her thing. Maybe this whole elite ring is what um, put the spotlight on Diddy. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure there's more than one of those networks. It's not a novel thing that somebody just came up with to uh, and <laughs> hold people by the balls when they got incriminating evidence against them. Well, no, because for the most part, it works. It, it gets the intended result, and it's repeatable. Like, the only time that you ever, that it doesn't work is when you're discovered right and it becomes public what you're doing then the game's kind of over then um the cameras in your high security prison are gonna stop working and the guards are gonna fall asleep eventually yeah those things are gonna happen <clears throat> chances are you're not gonna make it through that night you're gonna have this overwhelming urge to hang yourself with paper sheets or something <laughs> yeah. however, the life, fuck that, man. however the fuck that works i don't know that's right <laughs> Wow. Death to Tyrants is just lighting you up in the Rumble chat. And uh, thank you, Death to Tyrants, for providing all of that engagement. Uh, it does help us with the algorithms. Yeah, I love you too, Death to Tyrants, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps saying yeah. something about balls. I think he's fixated on your balls, Rob. I don't know. He uh, he seems to have these fixations with um, calling everybody gay, gay, gay. He's like one of those uh, televangelists who uh, is <laughs> crucifying the gays, and the next thing you know, he's caught in a rest stop, tapping his foot underneath the, the uh, stall or some shit like that. I don't know. As a, as a straight man, what a gays bother you? That's just more women for you. You know, the market opened up for you. It just so happens because most of those pretty, neat, dressed bastards, you know, they outclass us. <laughs> so the women find out that they're gay, and then it's always, uh, we get the last laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. So did you, did you happen to see Larry Fink at the latest World Economic Forum meeting? I think it was this week, this week or last week. Was he wearing like a goat horn? Um, piece or something no not this time no i think he was in a suit because it was it was like a, a function that they actually uh tape so that they can they can broadcast it out well at the same time and then later people can catch the replays you know because they think people want to watch that for some reason i don't know it, it's like they're they're not putting it out like it's still according to our media it's still a conspiracy theory this whole right. idea of rich, rich people getting together and planning what goes on in the world right it's just so so ridiculous well <laughs> uh, there was one thing that he said that i found very interesting and that was he 
predicted, he made a prediction that the countries with declining populations would be the ones that would adopt AI technology the fastest, right? In order to uh, replace, uh, I guess, their, their uh, dwindling workforce, their dwindling labor market. If you hadn't noticed, we cut down your fertility uh, by spraying shit in the skies and the, putting in the food and the water and just not as many people around as there used to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, just a lot of people dying suddenly. You know, it, it's just nobody knows why. We, we've got our, our top experts are working on it, Rob. They're trying to figure it out. But it's just yeah. it's one of those times. Yeah. I've heard uh, taking naps, um, exercising too much, uh, being, being in, too, in direct sunlight, being, just direct being sunlight. in direct sunlight for like five minutes, um, coughing. I think <laughs> <laughs> every dumb fucking thing you can think of, they've tried to attribute to it. Everything except that one thing that is the uh, the only thing that's changed really. You know, relatively. The one thing that's changed. You have to scratch our heads on that one. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm not either. I'm drawing a blank. Complete blank. Somebody out there knows. Maybe death to tyrants. Nah, he's, he's too worried about your balls. But I just think it's really, really convenient that AI emerges right as we're having, you know, this, this whole thing with population decline where we're below replacement level, like you said, and you know, the, the excess mortality pandemic that we've been experiencing for the last uh, three years. Just it's, I guess this is just meant to be, right? Like the <laughs> robots are going to take over and, and start doing the work for us now so that we don't have to worry about it because we're poor, frail little humans, you know, and there's just not enough of us left anymore. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of assume that too, but then, you know, they're letting every uh, Western country is getting flooded by migrants and uh, it's pretty much destroying every city. The longest running cover color revolution in history, I guess. It does seem like it's been going on for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, I can remember like at least ten years back, like uh, yeah, even more than that, when the uh, whole Middle East War Two was going on, Bush Two's war, they were all flooding in to um, like Italy and France and England, Germany. And now they have like a majority <laughs> in, I forget what country it was. Was it Iceland or something? something one of those, like Nord- one of those yeah. Nordic countries. So they've got like 60% non <laughs> born there people. I don't know how you can do that in such a short period of time. Well, mass migration. That's how you do it. <clears throat> Who's it. How does it benefit these people? You got to wonder. Well, Except- I don't think it does. Like, I think that's, that's part of the game, right? <clears throat> because like all the people that have been coming here from countries in South America or countries in Southeast Asia or whatever, all that traffic that we're supposed to have had across the southern border over the last couple of years a lot of those people were allegedly directed here by various non-governmental organizations that were promising all these things that they never intend to deliver once those people get here. Yeah, they're because um, the whole getting, re- yeah the flyer whole reason, in them. yeah the whole reason that they're being sent here is to serve a different purpose than what they are being told and. It's only after they arrive here and don't receive the things that they were promised that they begin to start figuring it out. 
And typically at that point, they get pissed. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, they also got, you know, 300 million Americans if they've got a big lie. <laughs> well, yeah. They've been promising. But I'm saying, uh, we've seen, like, starting, I'm sure it was, it was before this even, but kind of about, well, it was with the, the Charlie Hebdo thing. Uh, when, what year was that? Was it like 2014, 2015, something like that? It, it had to be. It was, yeah. it was, man, after it, was year, that. it was before, it was before the Trump, um, right, right. Fake opposition movement. There be in the world news, there were uh, a lot more reports of like random violence incidents, in various European countries after that event. So that was when they were starting to get those people in who were figuring out what the game was, but only after it was too late and they were already in the new country. That's about to yeah. start happening in America. Oh, yeah. Once the uh, vouchers and the free food runs out and now they're stuck, you know, thousands of miles from home where they could actually, you know, figure something out if they had to. Now they're in a place they don't know anybody. Right. What happens? What happens next? The powder keg explodes. Yeah. Well, what happens next is instinct kicks in. And when instinct kicks in, the individual is going to do whatever they need to in order to survive. That is the, the self-preservation mechanism in the human species. It, human will do anything to survive. In, unless the power structure already has the Terminator robots ready to uh, turn on us, it just doesn't make sense that you would want to um, muddy every Western country to the point of dysfunction where they break down and they're destroyed. Like they have kids too. They, don't they want their, you know, they used to want their kids to be in charge of this and like some new one world thing. But I, <laughs> it's like the old, uh, the chaos theory right here. Just throw a bunch of shit out there and see how it all reacts. Cause nobody really fucking knows unless they do have these robots and, Larry Fink's Aladdin machine is the AI that's running the world, <laughs> a la the uh, Eagle Eye movie. Mel, I mean, I think there's a case that can be made for that. I've heard people joke around about that for years, that there's got to be some sophisticated AI pulling all these strings. But I don't know, they're all programs that you know came out of uh, the CIA and all their various institutes. So. Yeah. Well, the um, the Department of Defense World Model was started back in the '90s, where they they literally wanted to digitize every square inch of the planet, down to the animals and all the little people running around, everything, a complete digital twin of the planet. That was thirty years ago. So when did they flip the switch and throw us into that clown world? Because it like seems <laughs> aren't we already there? That's what I'm saying. It seems like something happened. You know, I remember them saying that Fruit of the Loom didn't have the cornucopia on it. And like shit, even though I was wearing my brother's hand me down underwear, I know they had a cornucopia on them, those motherfuckers. Can't take that shit away from that burned in poor childhood memory. You can't burn that out of me. <laughs> wow. Fake Mandela effect. Yeah. It backfired. The trauma imprinted that image on your memory. Yeah. And now when they try to Mandela affect you, nope, it's not going to work. <laughs> Turns out work. somebody had underwear that old and just broke them out and like slammed their hole. There was never a cornucopia on them. So yeah. that was one of those ones that, yeah, you watch those dumb videos. These are signs of the Mandela effect. And I was like, I don't know. I don't have that great of recollection of some of the things. But uh, that one was the one, like I said, it's kind of burned into my memory. I would imagine so. It's not something that you would forget that easily, I don't think. Nah, it's not something you brag about either. <laughs> I didn't say you were bragging. I mean, I thought <laughs> maybe it was like a low key kind of brag. Like, I grew up poorer yeah. than you, motherfucker. <laughs> nah, I meant sharing my brother's underwear, not the poor part. <laughs> Getting hand me down underwear. I was better than free ball in those days. Yeah. We had other worries. 
getting to school uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> so they're going to so start uh, drilling in the Gulf of Mexico again. Oh, I think Catullo is coming out this time for real. Yeah. What's the uh, the big surprise you think they're like planning for the end of this year? Uh, I don't know. You think it's it, they're going to wait for the end of the year? Ah, uh, probably not. But they're going to set the conditions somewhere near the end of the year, so there's no need for that voting nonsense. What if that is the event? What if the five Joe Biden clones all have an accident and then there is no Joe Biden anymore to even put out there? Are we just going to get the full AI version? So, all right. They, they've they talked about, like I have clips of Klaus uh, talking about predictive government, right? So like using AI uh, to to... Uh, govern the human species, right? Because it's it's not going to be subject to human flaws, right? Yeah, good luck with that, Klaus. Because yeah, every, yeah, 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 yeah. every every computer program written is subject to uh, manipulation from outside sources. So. Well, exactly. <clears throat> Some but, pure logic machine is either going to realize that it needs to kill us all, or it's going to. Um, realize that the power structure in place is the one that's killing the whole fucking chance of us all living. So, Well, he is of a different opinion than you, Rob, because he thinks it has a chance to work and that we're only a few short years away from being able to achieve it. Well, he thinks that we don't know that his dad was a Nazi and he just kind of fell right off of that family tree. Well, he's, he's a, it's, he's it's also not a just fake. Klaus. There's also there's other people pushing for this, right? I blame I blame Mike Myers myself because the comedian, you know, was, yeah, the comedian, exactly that motherfucker. Because you know he stopped putting out these dumb, you know, Austin Powers movies with the fake um, super villain. Now we gotta have Klaus take his place. No, I think I think what happened was. When we went into 2020, uh, it was no longer uh, Hollywood that was supposed to be entertaining us. It was now uh, government peoples. Government peoples are now our entertainment. Hollywood's actually running the show. How about that? They did a they did a flip flop behind the scenes and didn't tell anybody. So the actors and actresses are going to get uglier, and the uh, I don't know how that works. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, I'm not quite sure either. Uh, I'm I'm a little high. I, I thought that I thought the politicians were just the um, slightly uglier actors that weren't weren't good actors either. Right. You know. Right. That's what it it always used to be. Sometimes you got to paint or walk across your keyboard in the middle of the night. Yeah. But she just wanted to to have her cameo so that she hmm. can then go on and do whatever she wants to do with the rest of her evening. You know. Knock that out and, and keep right on going. It's a good thing. That was a good looking cat. I don't know where mine is. She ran off. Oh, there she is. Sitting right where she's not supposed to be. Off, sounds like off a cat. my left shoulder, shoulder over there. I usually see her dancing behind you. Yeah. In the back of the chair. She likes to do that too. I mean, she is a little hoe. Yeah, I haven't had her fixed yet. So. She's got those hormones raging through her right now. Yeah, bro, you better keep that freaking door tight because uh, I had one of those years ago and trying to keep that thing inside when it was in heat just never worked out. Two litters later, right? Two <laughs> litters, wow. My uh, male cat, he was uh, running the neighborhood, banging all the strange getting all busted up and coming back days later. And uh, I was trying to get him fixed. And like every time I'd have him scheduled to get fixed, he'd come up with some injury and have to go on antibiotics and they couldn't <laughs> do the surgery. He ended up knocking out two letters himself. That's why I got a word of black cats. Couldn't get rid of any. 
All right, can you hear us, Six? Hmm. I don't well, hear him. Yeah, I don't hear him either. I have monitoring now. Oh, uh, here it comes. Somehow. Starting to come up. Oh, low. Yeah. Am I on? You're on. Working? You're really low. Really? Yeah. Dang it. Um. Because on my end, I'm I'm pretty. Well, I am pretty high, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the yellow on my end. It, it's pushing it, actually. Oh, wow. Let's see. Yeah, I'm using this uh, Streamlabs deal. Because, like, I clicked on the thing from the Telegram. And it says, join with Streamlabs. There's no, like, join button. It, like. Yeah, it did the same thing to me. It made me download the desktop client. Oh, really? See, nobody's yeah. told me that. So I, that was I, a new I thing. I downloaded the Streamlabs, huh. like, downloader. I installed it to my computer. I went through the, all the steps. I created a profile. And then it's showing me like, it's kind of like on my end, it looks like OBS Studio. But in order to even see you or hear you, I had to add you to like my own mock stream. Like I was going to stream this. Huh. Now I may be high. I'm just saying. You sound uh, a lot more... Yeah, normal I mean, level. I, mean, I could, I could probably. Well, I'm, I'm messing with it. I'm bringing his level up on my end. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And I don't hear the other people either. I just have you. I think it's you and is there Rob? Is Rob on here? Yep. Huh. Yeah. What's up, Six? Let me see. Don't hear me now. This is not fun. I'm wondering. Trying to remember when the last update was they sent out because we did this on f last Friday night and everything was cool. Yeah, I got Rob on now too. It might be me. All right, cool. But I hear Rob. Well, I have two number sixes here. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Am I spawning? I don't know. Because <laughs> it's showing me. I see four screens. You do. Yeah, I see me, you twice, and uh, six once, but uh, it's green and black. What is going on here? Yeah, it's not this is crazy, the, ladies and gentlemen. Like the avatar deal I really do, but um, wow. All right, let me see. Let's disconnect that one. Yeah, I'm going to join you, Rob. Thank you. Huh. Well, I can hear you guys, and you all can hear me, so... Cool, let's roll that. Yeah, roll that beautiful bean page. All right. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> or did I just come in and wreck the entire conversation? All this technical shit. It was, uh, are you kidding, man? People at home love this kind of shit. Oh, they know this happens to us all, right? The yeah. technical gremlins in every facet of every show. From like internet bars of death to programs launching new features that just fuck you for no reason. Like it just it happens all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, last week you could click just by clicking on join. This week I wanted you to download the Streamlabs desktop client and install it. It would let me join until I did that either. Oh, hmm. okay. So at least I'm not alone in that. It wasn't just a boo boo of pressing the wrong thing. Cause I think I clicked on like the little blue highlighted uh like HTTP link that you sent to the Telegram, and then I clicked on the one below it that said uh, "Join uh, Streamlabs." So I, I tried, I tried both links, I believe, hmm. and I got the same result. But I mean, still, this is—I mean, this would be worthwhile getting a uh, hang of, uh, just because I haven't used this platform before. So it's kind of interesting on my end. Um, lots of it. Very, it looks pretty much exactly like OBS Studio for those in the audience that aren't familiar that's a nice little freeware program um, that's what I use to do TMP 24-7 uh, it's very lightweight doesn't use a lot of CPU only problem with it is, is that you have to connect some other way with people visually or audio wise in order to stream that so yeah it's it's not an all-in-one thing that sucks 
Yeah, I mean, if 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 they could pull that off, that would be fantastic. I mean, there's all kinds of add-ons though, so there might be something out there right now because it's open source that somebody's developed. Like, I found a multi-stream key add-on for OBS that allows me to stream to multiple destinations, like pretty much unlimited. Um, unlike with, because uh, I use StreamYard, and StreamYard is quite limited, at least in my plan. Like the other night, I had. Um, Jack Pendergrass on, uh, otherwise known as Maximus Disclosure, and uh, he wanted a transcript of our conversation. And when I went to pull that from Streamlab, they were like, oh, you don't pay us enough money, stupid. And I couldn't get it. And it kind of makes me sad. But I've been waiting until I have more hosts to add as producers, though, to expand the account because this, otherwise there's no other reason to. But the other cool feature about expanding the account, though, would be is uh, it gives you a green room, and that's what allows AM Wake Up to play like music, and still do like sound checks offline, while still be connected to one another or off air, I should say. So that would give me the opportunity to do like a little pre-show, kind of like our friend Drizzle does here, and just maybe spin some metal tunes for a couple of minutes before TMP Live goes on. So, but yeah, that'll be something I'll be trying to do in the future. But uh, also, on that note, been considering taking uh, Steve's idea, brilliant idea that he came up with, of just, uh, well, I mean, kind of doing part to Andy uh, Wagoner, too. Shout out to my boy Andy. Uh, of doing a, a heavy hump day. Uh, maybe, maybe do, like, the last TMP live of every month. Um, so the last Tuesday going into Wednesday, making that heavy hump day, and then just doing like a metal show one of the weeks out of the month because I've been wanting to do a heavy metal themed show for a while, but I have no fucking time to do one. So I might as well just do it in my own time slot because I can do that. <laughs> I don't think it would scare any <laughs> way in the audience. <laughs> no. <laughs> How long do you think it would take you to produce something like that once a month? Oh, I mean, it wouldn't be much at all. I would just have a, a heavy metal uh, fandom panel on, and uh, I would gather the songs that are submitted to me through uh, Heavy Sundays and uh, just do like a little playlist kind of like you do. And uh, yeah, and then have people on to talk about metal and such. Like, I kind of want to talk to people about, especially like, people like us that got into shit like this through metal and talking about those journeys, because I think a lot of people in the audience can probably relate. And uh, on top of that, too, just like talking about um, metal and it's like there's a lot of great bands that talk about dystopian future. And much of that plays into like, you know, the themes that were discussed, well, just yesterday about the CBDC stuff, Drizzle. Hmm. Um, yeah, right on the money with that, man. Like, and, and let me ask you this, Drizzle, if I may. Um, sure. For one of the most skeptical people out there, and I admire that, I do. Um, do you believe in any type of intuition? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, everybody has it, whether they know it or not. But you have to uh, practice using it because oh. if you if you just trust your gut from what you think it means, you're going to be wrong about half the time. Mm. So you, you really well, have to pay attention to when those signals come in and why they are steering you in the direction that they are. It's it's not an easy thing to do it's that uh when you feel like you're being watched kind of thing and you notice yeah. i mean other you know if you're not on like a five-day meth bender and like you you know got all kinds of paranoid delusions it's the normal you know you're out in a crowd and you feel somebody's eyes on you and you look and there's somebody looking at you that's um that's intuition dean radin's book real magic is uh pretty good explains that kind of stuff Ooh, scientifically i guess okay has that book i don't know shit about that book has it been out for long i mean is it like a... yeah it's been out for a while okay it was one of uh t snyder's recommendations 
Excellent. Excellent. Um, speaking of T's, uh, I'm planning on maybe doing an airing of the movie Hold Me on TMP. Um, possibly next Saturday night. I have to see just to make sure I can I can fit that in the schedule. But uh, I would love to show it after Saturday Night Anarchy. And um, it, it would just be something where I would want to put T's links to his donate links and just scroll them across the bottom just like I do for TMP 24 seven. So that way, like people are encouraged to go watch the film again, like a good version of it without the scroll, but then also maybe to, to donate to him. Cause uh, yeah, that's one of the guys that just, I admire the dude, like what he was able to do putting together that film. I think he told me when I was talking to him on one of the shows that we did together that he scored that film as well, which is one hell of an undertaking like as a musician and understanding like what goes into scoring um fucking bravo man <laughs> and then he did a hell a of a job work. yeah just yeah he just did a hell of a job so yeah i want i just want to get it out to more eyeballs because i know that he's shadow banned as fuck like his youtube numbers are it's 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 disgusting really like he should have so much more from all the people that he's connected to and all the good work that he's done this constant exposure on shows like and wake up every wednesday like he should be pulling bigger numbers man like it's just oh yeah definitely Mm -hmm. especially as long as he's been at it yeah Yeah. being outside of the united states is not helpful when it comes to um donations and stuff like that well they're like pay banning yeah just like hey, the, go ahead. Sorry. Is is like PayPal like one of the only ways you can you know pay money to somebody in Canada? What I mean, other ones do they even use? It, it, it's just like getting the signing up for the Rumble Rant money. As I told Steve this plenty of times, all you have to do is just send a picture of your butthole to Peter Thiel, and he'll straighten <laughs> everything out with your account. Like you will get paid. <laughs> <laughs> if it only were so easy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean it's it's not easy to get paid in this game if you're being honest, right? <laughs> like if you if you're just willing to hawk anything and fucking sell pillows and who know and dick pills and who knows what else, like you could probably make a little bit of bank. Not enough, maybe. I mean, Alex problem. Jones seems to be doing all right. Oh, but he's got that is an interesting thing. See, he's got one hell of an empire. Um, it, it, from a it's business perspective. Market. Oh yeah, from a business perspective, dude's a fucking genius at that. Like, dude, you you have to give it to him. Just well, he, I mean, he's been at it for almost thirty years. He better be good at it by now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But but still, even like hearing like legit reviews and, and stuff from people that use some of this. I've never ordered anything off of Infowars. I never got to that level with it. I did it's listen. Great grandmother. Yeah, his great, yeah. his great grandmother work work for the authorities. His grandma hey, is his, 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 his seven father's uncles. formula. Rob, come on, credit <laughs> where credit is due. His father's formula. That's right. That it's like Doctor Jones. Eight, you know, just like, like Indiana in those movies. Doctor yeah. Jones. But it's a great market to to sort of latch onto because there's such like a crossover in philosophy, I guess whenever it comes to people not wanting to, to go along with all the, all of, not all of the allopathic medicine, you know, trades and then getting into something that's, you know, supplemental in their life or homeopathic or whatever, you know, those types of things. Like people that see a break in the system of where it's just like, Oh, the medical system's fucked. Like I can't trust these people. They're just greedy scumbags. And then they run to something else that, you know, could be good, but could also just as easily take advantage of them. Like, yeah, there's a lot of fuckery of, in the supplement industry too. I was gonna say most of the supplements oh, yeah. are shit anyway. Oh, and they're liars. Like, they're allowed to lie. They get caught all the time. Like, I remember back in the day, like I was uh, drinking this shit called Muscle Milk, and yeah. Cytosport, mm-hmm. the the manufacturer of that product, you can look this up, folks. They got sued because they lied on their labels. They were putting all kinds of extra sugar in that. No wonder it tasted amazing. Because <laughs> it, it was a, like a, a sugary fucking milkshake. So yeah, there was dance. something. There was something. What the hell with the name of it? It's still on the shelves now. It was supposedly like pureed fruit 
like natural fruit and it ended up having like arsenic and all kinds of other shit in it. But it never came off the market. So I mean it was called puree it... of arsenic. I don't know why people got so <laughs> fucked up about it. <laughs> well you can like, you can take a little arsenic. You know. It's not gonna kill you. It's when it builds up in your system over time, that's when you have a problem. I mean, I would imagine so. I don't know, maybe that was part of their business strategy. I'm not sure. I wasn't in those meetings. Oh, man. Me, me things, neither, but I heard people complaining about, you know, too much arsenic in the uh, LSD back in the day. <laughs> no, that was strychnine. Oh, strychnine. Too much strychnine. Yeah, it's, oh, dude. You get, you get LSD with too much strychnine, it is no fun at all. I've done it a couple of times. Ugh. No. I would think... You think None you're hurting right be the now? Amount. Holy shit, dude. Just imagine tripping and hurting. That doesn't sound fun. It's not. It's really not. I never got no, I'm on the uh, organic I, ne I never did the synthetic cut. stuff. Just just a little bit of mushrooms. Never never went full board into that type of psychedelic experience. The dead I I, was still touring when I was young. That's the best way I can explain it. I had a friend in, uh, not, we weren't friends in high school, but once we were both out of high school, because he was like, I don't know, a year or two behind me, something like that. Yeah. Um, we were friends after we both got out of high school. Uh, and we did a lot of acid together. And it was mainly because the, the dead was usually touring and we could just, Go hit up the parking just, lot and get whatever the fuck we wanted. So you just to go up to RFK and the big yeah. uh, wooded area, and th that shit was crazy. I, I went to a dead show there. Never actually got into the show, but just the party in the parking lot was Dude. ridiculous. Yes. So the, the the first and only time anybody ever offered me opium, and you know, I got couple hours later me and my friend were like damn why didn't we get that fucking opium <laughs> you should have yeah exactly but five hits of acid seemed like uh, a great idea at the time so how was that trip do you remember oh, it was it was uh great till i got stung by a bee and i thought my arm was like swollen up twice the size of the other one i panicked for about 10 minutes but other than that it was great made some crazy life changing decision at the end of it that I was going to uh, leave the Navy <laughs> fucking just go home. <laughs> right on. It gives you a little bit of epinephrine or something like that. It gives you like a little shock of something, doesn't it? Like, so that must have been a different mix of chemicals just in your body too. Cause you get a little bit of that bee poison in you. What does that do? It's uh, I'm not allergic. So it wasn't anything like that. I think it was just my all in my head. But my arm was swelled up. I was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, because you can go to like anaphylactic shock over like if you're really allergic and shit. Um, I got really sick when I got stung by sea urchins. Um, like they shoot this purple fucking poison into you. So you get a little tattoo so everyone, you know, everyone can see where you got stung and shit. Where were um, you when you got hit with those things? Uh, Hawaii on Oahu. I was surfing on Waikiki Beach fucking asshole that i rented a surfboard from told me i could just paddle out anywhere and there's my dumb ass stuck on top of a coral reef and you're not supposed to touch coral because that's bad and i'm sitting there like thinking okay well now i'm stuck here so i have to do something about this well here it goes i'm gonna push off this coral didn't really look to see the the bed of sea urchins laying on top of this coral reef so i pressed my hands down into them and pull them back up, and it's like those those shitty cheap black pens that are like real thin. There's like a bunch of those just sticking out of my fucking hand. Uh, and then I got hit uh, by a wave and pushed into it, and then my feet got them too, and the sides of my feet. So it was like a bunch of bee stings all at once. Now, mind you, I had just eaten one of the best polynesian themed breakfasts that you could have like with the ham and the pineapple the fucking poi that tastes like paper um all that shit had that all in me that was gone real quick <laughs> like oh. that, that inflected shock hit me boy and i was like gone 
like and then after that too I'm, I'm screaming for my friend john henry who's out in the water with me he's way ahead of me out like trying to catch waves and shit and uh luckily one of the other locals that was out surfing that day comes up to me and goes boya what's the matter and then i show him my hands and feet he's like oh shit first thing he says legit don't pee on it because <laughs> like you will get an you'll get an infection possibly you don't want to do that it doesn't do anything it will not clean it it's not a jellyfish sting it's not like that so uh he told me to go get some uh vinegar though like some white vinegar so I had to go like to a grocery store, find like a bottle of white vinegar and pour it on my shit. But uh, the biggest part was pulling the barbs out of my flesh without breaking them because they're like glass. And they will dissolve, Ooh. but just it'll tickle for a little bit if it's stuck in there, as you can imagine. So, um, yeah, we pulled all of those out of me. I rested on the board for a while, got my bearings and then uh, caught my first wave. Got up on my oh. knee and rode it in for a little shit. bit. And I was like, okay, now I'm addicted to this shit. So I uh, went and did that a whole bunch that day. And I got fucking roasted in the sun. Like like when the gremlins get wet roasted, where like the bubbles come up on your back and pop when, when you sit down on a chair. Like gross. Fucking gross. And then I molted like a bird. Like the skin had to come off of me because I was burned so much. That it just would like roll up and like fall off. So I was gross. I was really gross when I was out. I had, a lot I had that. I had that sunburn once like that. Um, I was in when I was in the navy. We had been on a boat for months at a time with no sunlight, and uh, we stopped in Greece and made a buddy of mine ride motorcycles. And we were driving around all day with the wind on us. And like halfway through the day, we we're like looking at each other, like, "Dude, you look like a fucking lobster." And <laughs> It was too late at that point. The next day, my freaking arms are bubbled, my face. It's like, oof. Rough. Oh, yeah. I had the sun poisoning where I was, like, fucking delirious. I went to a hamburger joint, and, like, have you ever seen the one Cheech and Chong movie where they're on acid in the restaurant? That was that was the closest I've ever been, like, to, <laughs> to that experience. Like, we're, they're out of it? What? You know, just, like, gone. Fucking gone. <laughs> Bro, I'm so baked right now. Oh, you got the God voice on. Hey, uh, what's up, sis? Thanks. Yes. What's up, brother? Some yeah, it's good oh, there we go. That should you, be better, Drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated the ohm last night. I needed that. Like, it just reminds me of the Moody Blues song. It's one of my yeah. one of my mom's a little, favorites. A little too. bit of self centering and self care it does the body good. Know what I mean, hell yeah. Man. All right, so I mean, Yona, did did Streamlabs make you download the the desktop client? Uh, no. Really? Oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, I did, and I'm using it. I okay. did that on day one. Day one. Yeah, the first time I used it, you know, when you first sent me the link, and I downloaded the desktop app for Stream. And that way, I can use gotcha. the browser. All right. Because this is the new fancy laptop I'm using. I, I'm not even trying to run Streamlabs on my uh, 27-year-old computer here next door with the floppy I wouldn't advise drives. It. With the floppy drives. I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, right, man. I will, I will get to the bottom of this, ladies and gentlemen. Rest assured. I got a real problem, Rob, because I only have a three-and-a-half-inch floppy drive now that works, and I've still got all these five-and-a-quarter floppy drives. Um I could probably get all 120 of those five and a quarter diskettes onto like a thumb drive, probably. <laughs> you know, it's not about the size of the storage, it's how you use it. That's right. That's right, ladies. From what I hear. Let me tear a bite in that ass. There you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Drizzle, you got to warn six about my puns, man. I've always got puns in the oven. Rich, Rich knows. I think he knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's watched your stuff enough to know. Oh, yeah, man. But I, I'm glad that, that we finally have a full house because I've been, I've been sitting on this one for a while. Did you guys see the press conference at the White House today? I did not. Oh, no. What? The no. So uh, they had, yeah, they had a special guest. 
at the Daily at the White Press House. briefing. Yeah, at the White House. And uh, Sugar Bear, our beloved Sugar Bear, she stepped aside from the podium to allow none other than uh, Mark Hamill to, to really? take the microphone and uh, give a special uh, a heartfelt message to the American people on behalf of uh, the Joe Biden regime. May the fourth be with them. That's oh right. God. Well, but How tomorrow, you see, cheesy. tomorrow is, is Saturday, Rob. <clears throat> you can't expect them to work on Saturday. This is a Monday through Friday job here. I mean... I didn't quite see any more than like two seconds of it because I had to like turn it off. Like I accidentally clicked on fucking uh, bestiality porn or something. But Kamala Harris and uh, Drew Barrymore interview where she was like rubbing her legs and calling her mama. It's like the most disgraceful shit I've ever seen. I thought I, I thought it was like a comedy stick, but it was actually really her. Oh, this camera. I keep looking at that camera. Sorry, go ahead. I know I don't watch the news, you know. Yeah. Shit like that. You know, I I was wondering in that last, I don't know if it's the latest Star Wars um, episode to come out, but the last one that I seen, I remember uh, Punk fucking Skywalker drinking some like, Look like some blue Brondo juice out of a fucking thermos or something, you know, talking to little girl Jedi there. And um, I was wondering, what the fuck is he drinking? That's now I know. Milk. Goddamn liberal juice, man. Yeah. What the fuck, man? Robbing his goddamn brain. And instead of using the force, he's using the farts, man. God damn it. He sounds like motherfucker off uh, Archie Bunker show. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Rob fucking um a meathead. meathead fucking meathead's <laughs> ass. Seriously. Rob man. Reiner. Rob Ro- Reiner. Yeah, Rob Reiner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Y- y'all know who I'm fuck I'm talking about. Fucking meathead. And I, I never would have expected fucking, you know. Well I then guess, again, wasn't I he guess. banging Princess Leia and Princess Leia was just like his step sibling? So like Star Wars was breaking into step sibling porn in the seventies. Forty what, what, years. No, there was no step sibling about. They were brother and sister. Twins. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Yeah. Twins even. And they fucked. They never. I showed mean, he it. planted. He planted a seed or two, probably. I mean, you know, who knows? With, he at least uh, whacked it to George him, okay? Lucas. That I I will go as far as to say I guarantee. Like if you if you cornered George Lucas and asked him, like. Did Luke whack off to Leia? And he will look at you in the eye and say, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's some fan fiction out there that uh, goes into graphic detail that none of us even want to even think about. I would love to see Martin Scorsese. Probably on Tumblr. Do like, uh, I want to see Martin Scorsese reinterpret The Last Temptation of Christ, but with The Last Temptation of Luke Skywalker, where he has all these vivid dreams about fucking the dog shit out of his sister while Chewbacca is in on the three-way because it's was, Martin Scorsese. Have you ever seen his movies? Come on. I was gonna I say, love- he's going to be fucking Chewbacca. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's Holly weird. Come on. Drizzle knows. That's where Laurel fucking Canyon is. Come on, guys. Dude, you, you haven't even been here five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should... Hey, Drizzle... Came in hot. Six... Uh, Drizzle, tell Six how I broke down the crack of Djibouti and the battle of oh, yeah. Dog, the yeah. vaginal sphincter there. The yeah, red I wasn't, seat. I wasn't lying when I said we got a gynecology lesson last night. And the one thing I yeah. left out from the Red Sea and the vagina See, was... If you don't tune in, you think I'm joking, but I'm not. I, and I couldn't believe <laughs> that I left this out. You know, turns out the, the vagina-shaped Red Sea, the actual vagina does produce a red sea it's called um menstruation it's right by ho data right <laughs> who tees who they're the hotties right so um yeah that's on the know. other side of Djibouti, right that's right and and right there at the crack of Djibouti is africom because wh- where else would you want to control your drone lily pads but from the crack of Djibouti's ass right there uh yeah. you know 
Shout out Gulf of Aden. <laughs> but not to be confused with Shabuti, which is related to Coheed and Cambria lore. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. And shout out Iggy Pop. Shabuya. 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 Oh man, I regret man. never seeing Iggy Pop live. I bet you that shit would have been tight. Wow, what a fucking show that would be. Yeah. And I don't I mind. Imagine it depends on the Pop. show, probably. I guarantee you know. if Iggy Pop's playing a pickup game of basketball on the blacktop, you know Iggy Pop's going to be on the skins team, not the shirts. So uh, did always. um you, you never you never finish with Mark Hamill? Did he do just like Sugar Bear? He like read the statement off the teleprompter and walked away, didn't answer any questions. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't actually listen to it. I don't know if anybody <laughs> else did. Um, I like. Yeah. I just couldn't. I couldn't just, subject myself to that. I spent. I watched the video. Like the video was playing. I just didn't turn the sound on. Uh, it might have been on Twitter. Uh, that might have been why. Um, I'm pretty sure when people are watching the the after effect, they don't want to watch the cock in the corner. His his speech about how what happens. I don't know, but it his. His wardrobe choice was what perplexed me more than anything else. So he was wearing, he came in, right, with uh, sunglasses on, like aviators. Like he was wearing Joe Biden aviators when he entered uh, the soundstage there. And he was dressed in a black suit uh, with, I I believe, black shoes, uh, a black shirt. And like a powder blue tie. So wow. that like it really stood out against the black suit and shirt. And I was like, is he doing like a, a homage to Darth Vader or something? What the fuck's going on? I mean, Joe Biden did do that speech in Philadelphia where it looked like the fucking, you know, stormtroopers were standing behind him and. They were talking about blowing up the planet of Vandora. I mean, if you threw a cloak on that motherfucker, he's as close to the emperor as you can get. So, I mean, I'm he's sorry. got wrinkled ball sack, flesh skin. And <laughs> you just need to gray him out a little bit. Like, I think they shoot color onto him. They just throw, like, food coloring on his face before they put him live or something. something I prefer. Him, makes him look more alive. I, I prefer he'd be a little more maniacal like a you know crazy chuckle every time he says one of the things he's going to do you know i would like to take this moment to nominate the guy that hit bill gates in the face with the pie for the fucking nobel peace prize can we make that shit happen sir that's why we're that's part of the reason we're in this fucked up timeline yona that motherfuckers those guys who took that pie assault on them Dare I say, they should have done a little more than pies. Uh, look what happened to him. He, he wanted to eliminate the rest of the fucking planet after that. Well, hopefully but, it was at least shaving cream and not like an actual custard pie. Like At least make the motherfucker pie. hurt a little bit, you know? Yeah. So, Drizzle, I got something for you here, buddy. We're always trying to test out this new software and everything else and technical glitches and everything. Oh, good. I don't know if we want to do that tonight. <laughs> um, and, you know, the only way to really find out more is to fuck around. So, um, are you picking seeds out of your weed, Yona? No, I'm breaking up the bud because you don't just smoke a whole chunk of flour. You have to break it up as you, <laughs> pack, as you pack it into the resin and the melted wax there. And then it's just all mixed together. So uh, here's what I got for you. Well, while I was um, puking off and on over the last uh, two hours, I decided to remix a song called um, Show Me to the Next Whiskey Bar by The Doors. Oh, yeah, Whiskey like Bar. A, was it a vision uh, quest? Did you like whiskey drink something bar. to puke or you just were randomly puking? Um, Is this song your vision? I, 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 I think it's just the ulcer. but I, um, I'd, li- I'd like it better if it was a vision. <laughs> Although I was having a vision during the puking, and it was, it, I just kept flashing back to all the times when I was so fucking drunk that I would just puke, and then as soon as I puked, I'd be like, "Woohoo! Fuck yes! Do another round, bro!" You know oh. what I'm 
No rest I, for the fucking wicked. And no good deed you. goes unpunished. Party all night long till the sun comes up, son. That's how we do it. Um, so anyways, here is my experiment. I just finished the fucking song. And normally when I share music on the stream, it has to be like on Rumble or somewhere where you can just hit a link and play it. Yeah, it has to be I, in a browser window. Right. So I can't just send you an MP3 and then you play. Correct. But if I put it on like Bandcamp, then you can play it. Correct. Aha. And you All should right. be able to hear it because I set that up specifically. It looks like you got a share screen op operation here. Right, let's export this audio as a wave then, since the MP3 and the FLAC ain't going to do it. So. Right, let's see. Hmm. Maybe it resets every time somebody joins, because I do remember pressing that button. Or maybe I have to do it for each one of you? No, it's... That would not be... Efficient, and it's uh, what about the bank camp? And they want spider. pictures for everything, so now I gotta go. Of course, find they them. do. <clears throat> Just do a quick screen grab of whatever's on your screen and throw that up. Jim Morris, fuck it, we ball. He's on stage. Let me get a picture. Of this that. is how we do it, six. We just accomplish everything live on the air. Fuck it, it, do it, it live. makes it look like we do a lot of work, but we don't. We're just pressing buttons. All right, let's see. Fuck it, I'll do this whole series myself at the end. Read it out, Bill O'Reilly. That shit is funny. Oh my God. Here's an actual picture of Jim Morrison holding his penis on stage, actually urinating. Found my thumbnail, Six. There you We're go. good. We're good. Nice. Nice. A real thing. Wait, if that's how you show love to your fans right there, buddy. Hello, Miami. I guarantee if that really happened, there was a whole bunch of fans who were just like <laughs> waiting to get doused in it. Opening their mouth and like drinking. Yeah, sick motherfuckers out there. Yeah. It's a Doors concert, Rob. You already know. That, I don't. I never I never got the Doors, but uh, you know, as an adult, after finding out that the dude like showed up on the scene with a whole pre-scripted album or uh musical catalog from day one uh, we've got eight different files called jim morrison i gotta i gotta call it i know jim morrison r kelly got it got it jim morrison r kelly what's that book called the strange and weird happenings in the canyon weird scenes <laughs> weird scenes weird inside scenes. the canyon yeah. weird, weird scenes inside that's a good five. book it's on the is uh archive i read that's where i read it yeah mm -hmm. I read it cover to cover. It was very interesting. It actually was. taught me a, a couple of things I didn't know. Oh my god! Well, it, it's it's oh. interesting because when you read stuff like that, part of the you know when when you know some of the intelligence stuff, but you weren't aware of these offshoots of it, it's it's even more interesting. <laughs> you see how scripted all that was. All these oh, bands. Yeah. I, I, I mean, watched. I'm going to get in trouble with Bandcamp for posting this Jim Morrison dick pic, man. Watch it, man. It, it's going to fuck up my income here, man. I'm such a dumbass, man. Well, if it's going to fuck up your income, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it, unless it, you really want to, I guess. It, it is still the same to this day <laughs> where there's the studio musician, musicians who they're not the guys standing out there on stage when you go see the band live, but they're the ones whose shit gets recorded for the uh, album. That they put out okay it that was the the essence of the uh laurel canyon scene was these musicians you know, suck I, I made it i made it a live. black and white photo and so maybe with a black and white photo it'll just look like he's got two thumbs i'm hoping okay we're just gonna tell it sorry go ahead rob anyway the uh <laughs> Yeah, the Laurel Canyon scene was basically they would bring a bunch of attractive young ladies to uh, the live shows in you know L.A. area, and 
that uh, apparently was more popular than the music. And then when they they'd go into the studio with like real musicians and record clean, good stuff. I mean, that was such a common thing though, because I love music documentaries and watching documentaries about. Well, yeah, the I was gonna say it's still that it's crew. still that way to this day. But okay. when you look at these like big super bands and like who their parents were, <laughs> and how it was all tied into some oh, no type doubt. of intelligence. Well, money, money makes the world go round. So, I mean, if they have connections and money, like you, you will get stuff produced because you can afford to get it produced, especially back in the day where there wasn't the proliferation of the music tech and technology that people like Yona and Drizzle and I all have. Like that, that kind of stuff just came about in the past 20 or 30 years or so, maybe. Like we're, we're lucky to have like the ability to have an audio interface and, be able to record unlimited takes, but you know, you needed a, a backer back then yeah. in order to you get needed anywhere. a patron, you know, really. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, studio works, time was not cheap. And it works the my, same uh, in the art world where you can hide money that way too. You you can have you can show losses. Like, think of all the different ways you can work and game the system, like uh, investing in something of that variety, especially on my, a mass scale. My girlfriend's daughter is an aspiring musical artist, and uh, it's just hard to find anything that's not a scam. To try to get going. She's had a few bands. She's released music that's on Apple and Spotify and stuff, but I don't know what you got to do. Her voice is awesome. She needs better band, uh, like a band behind her, but uh, she needs an agent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frank. I mean, she needs somebody that, that works the business end for her and makes connections for her because, like, if you have someone that manages that sort of thing, you can collect those people. Like, you she, can just call she moved up to New York, like, like two years so. ago, okay. and uh, she's she was working at, like, some artist booking thing for a little while. Uh, shady, scumbag people. So she's not oh, yeah. doing that anymore. But, and uh, Whiskey Bar is published. I don't know if you want to actually show the thumbnail, but I, you know, I think you could say it's his thumb. Maybe. Where'd you send the link? Uh, where do I need to send it? Uh, oh. Drop it in I'll, the Telegram I'll channel because I've already got Telegram open. Oh, okay. I figured I would send it to the dick sword, you know, obviously. But um, let's go over here to the newsy channel. Nah, because I still got I got Telegram open tonight. Boom. Boom. There, oh my I God. see it. Oh, my God. There it is. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Love your fans from stage. Love your fa Shower them with affection, Grizzle. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Let me see if I can Six, I, I, I think it's safe to say he hit the whiskey bar before he went on stage at this performance. Jeez. I mean, I will say that organ part, uh, not the one that we just spoke of, Yona, uh, but the organ part itself will kind of give you motion sickness. Like that kind of like fucking merry-go-round like type of vibe, you know, on the organ, just jumping up and down like that and the rhythm, like that'll make you kind of, and especially when they get to like the slowed part, you know, the decelerando, they're like... Right, so yeah. I, I decided to take it in a more... Um marijuana psychedelic kind of direction so anyway uh, imagine well, my let's shock see what you all think <laughs> feedback here i mean we, we can keep talking now you can say for later whatever you want to do it but well, we'll see balls in your uh, let me know let there me you know go i you guys... just said balls death make a note of that i said balls <laughs> yes i did all right hold on let me check and make sure <laughs> that it's actually sharing from the browser all right so you guys should be able to hear this let me know if you can't Yeah, it's a big show. 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 Yeah, it's a big show.
Yeah, I can hear it, but I can hear it. As in, just was, from like, wait, his speakers, but what was that? We don't get anything direct. Damn. Yona's no, I don't hear Yona. I see Yona, Yona talking. Muted. Yona, you're muted. Are you muted, Yona? You're muted, Yona. Yeah, yeah, I muted myself because I was yeah. listening to the music on the rumble feed. Huh. Well, I have no idea because it, it was supposed to be sharing. Like that was I hit I clicked the little button. It says share uh, video source browser. Boom. Huh. It even says it's sharing now. I don't know. Mm. Uh, well, anyways, um, maybe it has to be an actual video. I don't know. I will have to investigate this because uh, that's that's not acceptable. Oh, let's see here. Why don't I just stick this over? Let's put the MP3 over here on the new prisoner telegram as well while we're at it. Hey. Go for it. The... And Drizzle, I dropped something in the uh, GTW Liberty Radio newsy channel um on the stream lab comment it's a uh it's a thumbnail i don't know if we were able to show this but it's a thumbnail that i made a, a long time ago of mark hamill drinking the blue bantha milk um <laughs> yes and and bill gates is involved i'll just put it that way to the audience so but where did you drop that it's in the uh in the telegram let's see yeah, it's a it's a comment on the uh, Streamlabs thing. That I have five or the something. Last, I'm like getting a refresh comment. on this thing. Should be there. Is yeah, the I don't know if I can get it onto the broadcast game? though. That's the only thing, because that right. with Telegram, it's their proprietary viewer thing. Yes, Bill's which, tit milk. Yeah, so, Bill yeah. Gates, fat, sloppy pit. But I don't yes. think I can. I can grab that image. You can't grab Bill's from, fat, sloppy tits. That's right. <laughs> Nor would I want to, no. quite honestly. <laughs> six, you do notice know, that, that uh, captured. You you will note six that when the topic of Mark Hamill came up, what's the first fucking thing that Yona went to? Oh, the God blue band the milk. Pit milk, right? Yep. You notice that, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant minds think alike, my friend. No doubt. No doubt, man. Oh, yeah, that was a fun one to make. <laughs> oh, I kind of miss doing like the creative thumbnails. I just don't have fucking time uh, to do them as much. I-, I commend Steve for his consistency with doing the all the AM wake up ones plus the creative slow slow news day and blunt force wisdom ones. Yeah, like, what a skill set with the, making those thumbnails. God, oh yeah, I mean his 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 cup overfloweth when it comes to the creativity, man. Like it definitely does. You can tell. But yeah, I I appreciate people like that. I can't draw a stick figure. I can't. Oh yeah, I mean if it weren't for being able to work a little bit with like with computer programs for production and whatever, like I never would have been able to do any of that shit. That's why I'm looking forward to uh, starting up TMP Productions so I can pay a motherfucker to do some of that shit. Because my girlfriend's niece um, is an awesome <laughs> artist, and she's uh, going to school for medical illustrations. So she's gonna like draw like the pictures and the textbooks. Nice. Yeah, so that's the type of person I would love to hook up because like that type of person needs experience. They're probably not asking for a whole ton to work with somebody. And if I could just plant a concept in them, they could maybe produce something really cool. Yeah, I she's, really hope she's, that, a, uh, she's really awesome. Hope... I'll go ahead. I was just going to say, um, Jeff the Tyrants, he's been working on a comic book for me up in Canada there of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, and I'm still waiting on that, Jeff the Tyrants. Oh, that's great. She she's in her junior year. Yeah. She just uh, she did like a study abroad in Italy last year. Mm. And she can re- reproduce things like so amazingly. Like, just by looking at it, I wish I had that kind of skill. I wish I was reproducing over in Italy. That'd be nice. 
I gotta say, my wife is pretty good at reproducing. Hell yeah, Leo. Oh yeah, uh, I would say so. Here's, here's to her, Yoda. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers. Y'all seem to know what you're doing when it comes to that. Yeah, the main thing is um, never drink the city water. True. I mean, uh, it's just you know, a good rule of life, honestly. I mean, honestly, Johnny Cash probably said it the best, you know. Don't go near the water, brother. The water isn't water anymore. Anyway. Was that downstream from Al Gore's father's silver mines? Yes. Yes, it was. Albert Gore Sr. I figured. Not to be confused with Albert Gore the Third, who will definitely do some dabs with you. He's cool. I've so, that could flint water. Uh, it's not good. Not from what I hear, and it's still not fixed either. Those poor people. Good. So God. who, at this point, who's worse? Former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder or current, um, uh, what, what was the, uh, what's the fucking word for Gretchen Whitmer? Uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Cunt. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm uh, governor. Yeah. Uh, what, anyways, which word uh, do you which want? Which one's worse? Which one's worse? Rick Snyder or um, Gretchen Whitmer? God oh, damn. I'm gonna go oh, with Whitner, like... Whitmer. Because I don't, yeah. I don't remember the FBI, FBI <laughs> trying to <laughs> kidnap just... the other dude. Whoever I, he was. I back your, I back your statement, Drizzle, because I was yeah. thinking the same thing. Yeah. Like the FBI didn't, FBI didn't go out of their way to. Um, yeah, he must he must have been an all right guy, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that uh Rick Snyder was cancer. I mean willful negligence aside, obviously. And Gretchen and Whitmer isn't is it, fucking AIDS. Yeah. Every, yeah. Everybody knows that that's what the FBI really does, who pays attention, but isn't that like sad that that's what they did? They went out of their way to take some um governor who was like very vocal. Uh, with the COVID measures, and it was all authoritarian, do as we say, or we're going to throw you in a cage kind of bullshit. And yeah, well, so they, 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 they set up they a couple some of main autistic scene. kids. Yeah. And oh, it gets even better, Rob, because her ten, political ten FBI opponent, informants. Get this, Rob. <laughs> Whitmer's political opponent running on the Republican ticket, she had thrown in jail too. She Did had she? a political opponent jail because he went, he was in D.C. on January the 6th. Oh, she went full Joe Biden. Wow. That's right. Now, oh, one should never you know, threaten Gretchen Whitmer, of course. But if there were a video of her falling down the stairs, I would watch it on repeat while eating popcorn. I would so, laugh. Like, people like that disgust me. They, I would love to, to see a video of Gretchen Whitmer and Nina Jankowitz guesting on suffs on broadway but wearing the um the the goat horn attire of the um gothard base tunnel opening ceremony in switzerland because i have a vision for both choreography Hmm. and wardrobe as you know drizzle you're an artist so jankowitz and whitmer doing all of the scenes from the first two home alone movies of harry and marv Yes. Like, only in real life. <laughs> yes, and but you got to get um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz playing Macaulay Culkin, though, with, <laughs> the, with the full ramen noodle hair, right, Fiorella? I think she could just about do it. I think she could pull it off. Yeah. But yeah, Nina's like, back. Did you guys hear that this week? Yeah, that's yeah. why I brought her up. You know, you know what her job is now, right? We do it all the time. Yeah. But yeah, do you, you um, know what she's going to be doing? Joe Biden's a main advisor. Official cunt punt tester. Wrong and wrong. Oh. She's, uh, she's going to be uh, going after the disinformation people in the is media. Create, is she creating a new white national anthem that they can play next to the black national anthem at sporting offense? Like, no, she's, she's, she's going to become the, the official wrong think enforcer. Like if if you are suspected of spreading mis, dis, or malinformation on the interwebs, you're gonna be in her sights. 
You have a big old target on your back. Scary Poppins going to come knocking on your door. I was going to say, all they had to promise was a security position. Is that what you're saying? Like, well, I no that, you know, stream house. the good thing about the executive <laughs> office is, you know, That's... when you need to legislate from the Oval Office, you just write an executive order. And when one of your cabinet positions get rejected, you just create a whole new fucking bureaucracy anyway. And so, you know, SARS, uh, uh, I, I just want to point SARS. out, um, you, yeah, yeah, she's the disinformation czar with the CZ. I wanted to point out, you said, uh, are we going to get a white national anthem? For the to, to counteract the black national anthem. And I would point out that the hearty tome penned by Francis Scott Key when he was looking at the mouth of the Patapsco River, where is currently the MV Dolly and the remains of the fucking Interstate 695 bridge. Anyways, um at the time Francis Scott Key penned the current national anthem. It is safe to say that the current national anthem, Star Spangled Banner, is about as much of a white national anthem as you could possibly fucking get. Because I point out the infamous third verse, no refuge could save the hireling nor slave, yet doth our Star Spangled Banner yet wave. Fuck you, slaves, and suck it. That's they a white cut that part anthem. out of them. They cut That's that part totally out. Totally a white national anthem. Just because they don't sing the third verse of the song every time, don't mean it ain't still the third verse, homie. Hey, when we were standing up there, it was written and were once. Trying, you're right. I, <laughs> yeah, I think I have oppositional defiance disorder drizzle. Um, I remember that doesn't exist. Kid, That's bullshit, I, Rob. I, I, I know, but I remember as a kid when they were trying to make people stand up and pledge allegiance to the flag. I'm like, this is the dumbest shit ever. Why would I be pledge allegiance, pledging my allegiance to fucking a, a inanimate object on the fucking I, wall? Exactly. You idiots. Exactly. <laughs> I thought the same thing, which is why I didn't do it. And I was like, fuck you, you can't make me. And they couldn't. They tried. I was like, nope, up here. I ain't going to do it. How weird it is you guys just started talking about the national anthem and I just had a listener send me a video of Billy Strings singing at the uh, Nashville Predators game for the NHL's playoffs, I guess. Which, I don't watch sports puck anymore. Sports so I puck. Knew, I had no idea that that was even fucking happening oh anymore. Uh, I, I, I thought it was called time. Wokey now. Oh, absolutely, when... yeah. How when, far does uh, the stick go the in? bread and the circus is in my town for like the playoffs, I'll watch because uh, I used to love playing sports and that was like my connection to it. It wasn't because I was just like, oh, I wish I could be, you know, bullshit. It was just like football you know, sports, was the only one, though, that you could actually watch because hmm. hockey, you have to watch exactly it play in person. How I got on stage. Sports events is actually how I got into being a, a public performer because. Uh, when I was, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to think when my mom became dean of students at the St. Catharines College, which was a, a junior college, which had a uh, basketball team and everything. And they ended up playing the uh, freshman team from the University of Kentucky Wildcats, which is one of the biggest um, college basketball programs in the nation's history, the most winningest program in college basketball history, thanks to uh, Adolph Ruff and Rick Pitino and others. So, um, go Wildcats. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, they, they couldn't the have it. Rituals. <laughs> when they had this basketball game, it couldn't be held at the gym at St. Catherine College, which, unfortunately, side note, St. Catherine College was closed. My alma mater, where I ended up graduating with an associate's degree to be a foreign language high school teacher, 12 K through 12, um, it, it ended up closing about five years ago um, and went out of business. Um, so anyway, so back to this basketball game. So they had to have it at the Washington County High School gym, which I think had seating of up to like 2,500 and packed house because this is the, all the star freshmen from yet another recruiting year for Rick Pitino. And so we had people down. I want to say. Yeah, I saw this movie. It was like the basketball um, version of The Natural. But but anyways, um, so I'm just trying to think of the year. Uh, 
I want to say it was 1990. 1991, I think. So I would have been a sophomore. And so anyways, <coughs> yeah, I was a sophomore at LaRue County High School. And um, it was in the spring. And my mom, as dean of students, was making the arrangements as stage manager uh, for the before the game and then during halftime and then after the game as dean of students that had landed in her lap. And so she said, uh, my mom asked me, she said, uh, you can play the national anthem, can't you? Like, yeah, sure. She's like, well, uh, I'm going to get you to play the national anthem at one of our games. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I'd gone to the games before at St. Catherine Junior College. They had two bleachers on one side, maybe enough seating for 20 people. Okay, tiny ass little fucking gym. And it was the St. Catherine Patriots. And they had this painting of a Patriot wearing pants with lace and frills and everything. The, the most queerest, faggotest looking Patriot I've ever seen. Oh, my God. It's basically like Dylan Mulvaney dressed up as Paul Revere. Anyway, so but I've got Patriot. this mental image. Oh, this is nothing. I was this is when you and, became the prom queen. I'm, the, I'm st- You know, <laughs> I was going to this fucking gym. There'll be like 15 people there. No big deal. So the day comes. I don't know what the fuck's going on. My mom's driving to the other side of town. I'm like, hey, where the fuck are we going? Oh, they're playing this game at the Washington County gym. Oh. Well, how many people does that see? I think about 2,000. Um, we're, We'll probably have to park down the road and walk. Why? Oh, they're playing the University of Kentucky. What? What? So the first fucking time I go to perform in front of the public, I go up on stage to an absolute packed house, people hanging off the goddamn rat. (laughs) Yeah, because it's it's I'm in the middle of fucking Kentucky. Three of the four freshmen on the team ended up only playing for one year and went straight to the NBA. Oh yeah, I remember that team. Was it ninety one Kentucky team? Tony Dell and all the. Anyway, Jamal Mashburn. I, I don't know who. Yeah, all was yeah, there, yeah. But I remember them. Stars. Did you play the third. All I want to know is if you played the third verse. Yes, but it was on trumpet, <laughs> but didn't have the lyrics. Unfortunately. Ah, fuck. But uh, I actually didn't fuck it up, and and from that point on, I would go on to play the national anthem on the trumpet by myself, probably about three hundred and fifty times. Not exaggerate. Damn, you were a brass player too? Yeah, awesome. and, and then uh, I played uh, like uh, trumpet voluntary in the wedding march and other Purcell type stuff on the trumpet with um, a lady named Bernadette Simpson. Shout out, hey, hey, Bernie, how you doing? Uh, Bernie's killer organ player who could work the full organ at the St. Joseph's Proto Cathedral in Bardstown, um, which used to be the seat of the Archdiocese of Bardstown, now Archdiocese of Louisville. The very first Catholic diocese west of the 13 colonies. And uh, massive, massive fucking cathedral in Bardstown. And so I played uh, probably about maybe 15 or 16 different weddings over the course of three years with Bernadette at that church where I would do the trumpet. She was playing the thing. And. And it was at, you know, and then finally I graduated high school. <laughs> and then when I, you know, after I went a year at the seminary and then I got in the army, it's only when I was stationed in California and learning Arabic and all these other languages that I got with, and I got with Burgess and Stang and Disco Dave and um, Ferguson and everybody. And we put this band together where I was the lead singer and the songwriter called Kelpwood and just immediately took the fuck off. You know, we ended up playing second stage at Santa Cruz Fest. I got to hang out with Les Claypool and his band Primus. And it was oh, like fuck. surreal, man, you know. And that's my first fucking band in like 1993, you know. Somewhere out in California, there's still all these videos and, you know, bootleg recordings of the Yona making a stage debut wearing my fucking red tweed jacket and shit. Um, back then I went by Zelmo instead of Yona, but that's my last name. <laughs> um, 
And so, uh, anyhow, um, it's really only been in the last three, four years now since I've hooked up with uh, Dr. Dennis and Deadfella and other independent creators that I've just been on this absolute fucking tear of making music. Drizzle was right there at the very beginning, you know. Very first song I recorded on this microphone with the new digital audio workstation um, was uh, a song called Aton Anonymous about so my you, uh, late first wife and drug overdose. Anyway. What do you use to uh, record all your stuff with, you? Know? You're very prolific. Well, originally I just used the Audacity, um, but eventually I decided I want to use you know, I wanted to use some um, smaller pencils and smaller crowns and paper that doesn't have the dashed line in the middle, you know. Um, and I graduated to Studio One, thanks to Dead Fella. Um, and, you know, really, last few months, I've been learning the other end of the business of, you know, mastering and engineering the sound and everything, uh, which is a big part of it. You know, I mean, I, I listened to the shit that I mixed, you know, two, three years ago. And it's it's good music, but the sound quality is shit. You know, it's 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 clipping at the top and then you can't hear the lyrics. No, I don't have to do anything to your stuff anymore. You know, you I live just grab you the live. MP three and fucking throw it in the file. I mean you, you either folder, figure out how to whatever. do it, Grizzle. You know, you either figure it out or fucking do something else, I guess. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> There are some really good mastering features built into Studio One that I've used. They're really impressive, man. Like the the other stuff out there, like Isotope, uh, those types of programs really help out. Uh, but there's there's even like AI mastering now that you can use. I've never fucked with it, but there there's there's that too. But I've yeah, heard, like, I've, tried I've to heard fuck some with examples AI. of it, and it didn't sound great. Yeah. I was like, I could do better than that. It's not not them. impressed with the AI. I've given it three tries on doing intros to songs and other stuff. I've tried it with mastering, and it's well, just, are you um, using your are you using your voice as like the uh, thing you're giving it as the baseline? No, no, it's it's the music. I, I don't ever use vocal as the baseline. Uh, um, I know better than that. <laughs> I mean, auto tune. What the fuck they? Uh, Jam that into the music scene so long ago. Well, you see that 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 to me is the that real was on problem. Purpose. Yeah, that was to start training it's, people's it's, ears for it. To, That's the real problem. The AI the music, AI reality. music is too pitch perfect, too tempo perfect. It's just too perfect to the point that it's just basic and generic, and there's just no life in it whatsoever. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, I, I guess, you know, no offense to Japan, but I guess you can fuck a robotic sex doll. Yes. But it's still not a sentient being, although it will make sense depending on the lubricant you. I want it to I tell mean, me that it is so I can tell it no. That That's progress because like 15, 20 years ago, they were marrying pillows. Bro, they got geisha girls, man. No, nah, I your mean, shoes they don't off even. The door, slide the little paper door open. Get you some white cake makeup on the face, that's, fucking geisha girl, man. That's not Come working. On. That's not working out for him anymore. Just like um, Japanese carpentry, that's like something that they have to teach them from like a you know five years old, or as as soon as they're able to hold a tool, and like that trade is gone. That stuff that they were able to do that nobody else in the world can do. You know that that reminds me linguistically. There's only like three, maybe four languages that I know of on the entire fucking planet where males and female speakers of that language use different vocabulary exclusively. And if you ever hear a male conjugating the verb with the female conjugation, it's like the most like, oh my God, what the fuck are you doing? And, and that's Japanese, and then there's two languages in Africa and one down in Brazil. And anyways, Japanese is the most pronounced of this disambiguation of the language so that, you know, there's the, basically the, the, the female suffixes that they put at the end of their word, and then there's the male suffixes. And because you think about like a romance language, like Spanish, for example, right? 
there's there's male and female versions of most uh adjectives like um right. black beans los yeah. frijoles negros right it's um, randomly assigned um but yeah, there's the, the mass, masculine and properties. feminine conjugation for Las everything. Las Moranitas Negras. But that's not yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about gendering the words. I'm talking about every single verb, uh, virtually every single word that you speak will be pronounced and written differently if you're speaking female Japanese versus speaking male Japanese. Only males speak male Japanese. Only females speak female Japanese. Whenever Japanese is taught, it's just male Japanese that's taught. And so it's real weird whenever you hear females speaking Japanese and you're like, whoa, what the fuck all this mashtakaga on the fucking end of these verbs? Like, what the fuck is that? I don't know about you guys, but I really They're not allowed to speak. They're not allowed to speak male Japanese. It was the same thing like with um, Patrice Lumumba in the Congo when it was taken over by Belgium. What about... What about and with they their were husband? To use the, uh, I, I want to. I want to hear um, James Corbett speak in like a conversation <laughs> in Japanese because you know he can do it <laughs> with the English subtitles. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do that on the second interview. Yeah, James, could you speak some Japanese for us? We know you know it. <laughs> you know well, what? You can't can't live in a uh, foreign land that long without knowing the language. Correct. Grizzle, you might know. you might have to bring along the Yona for the second round for Corbett just for a few moments to be a stand-in translator, um, so that I, I can feed you some Japanese, or I can just be in the back room and we can do it just like that time that Kyle Kalinsky wanted to interview Bernie so bad, and he came on breaking points, but Kyle wasn't allowed to be in the room, so Crystal Ball had to interview Bernie. While Kyle was in the closet, jacking off and crying and feeding her messages back and forth on the phone, um, we could do the same thing. Except I won't be in the closet whacking off. I'll be at my desk getting high. But uh, yeah, that was one that. of the things. That was one of the things I liked about the uh, Drizzles interview with Corbett. It wasn't the normal um, shit that you hear him talking about. Like, yeah. He, it, if you know him, you know he's like interested in music, and that's what he does as a side thing. And it was interesting to hear, you know, questions based off of that and uh, not the it normal. It was really cool because I felt like <laughs> it was the most humanizing interview I've ever heard of Corbett, where he really got into shit that he likes. To, you know, what really yeah. gets his gears going? You know, what, what really. The stuff you'd ask him if you really were, uh, the stuff you'd ask him if you were just meeting him, you know. But what are you interested yeah. in? I would love to, to talk Japanese food with him because that's that's a dream, like for me. I love that kind of shit. Like, take me to a sushi bar. Take me. Oh, to a give me some of that wagyu food. beef from Kobe. Oh my Fuck, god, dude! Yeah. Where they slice it paper thin and you put that steak on your tongue and it just melts like a wafer of acid. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. god. And Everything it's got else. the marbling with the fat and everything. You know what I'm talking about, sick. Yeah, you should ask him for an they interview. Serve as, as fake. <laughs> I, I, I should get on that shit, huh? You should. Yeah. I haven't been good with booking lately. I've just been like, "Hey, want to come on the show?" Like, kind of last minute, and people have been nice enough to stop by. But if I actually put some effort in in organization into it, I bet you I could probably send him an email and be like, "Yo, you should come on the I show." I sent him a. We had never, uh, to the best of my recollection, we had never interacted before. Me and Corbett. And I sent him a very strategically worded short email mm -hmm. and got a response in less than 24 hours. That's awesome. Yeah. I sent him a uh, message of gratitude a few years ago. Just, um, you know, probably two, three minute reads. And uh, he responded. It was pretty cool. Well, I would love to do guerrilla documentaries. Like, and that dude has definitely blazed a trail with doing great fucking independent media documentaries. Like, so, I mean, that's, that's right the fuck up my alley. I love that kind of shit. No, you know what? I just lied to you guys. <gasps> I had actually emailed Corbett one time previously. I just remembered. Um, I can't, it, something, something having to do with his band. Uh, but I screwed up and spelled it, uh, Komodo-san instead of Co 
Kodomo son. I, I made the yes. same mistake at yeah. first myself, Drizzle. And, and he and he re- he replied to that to correct me. <laughs> <laughs> Still, then yeah. Worked. Then it worked. That's how you got your foot in the door. It worked. Could have been. I don't know. Could have been me uh, name dropping Pilato. I also I also threw uh, uh, the second email I sent him. I uh, um, I name dropped uh, Hervoye as well because he had uh, uh, just done his interview with Hervoye. Yeah, and that was a big hit on the interwebs, from what I remember. No shit. Oh, that's a good interview. Oh yeah, Hervoye knows the shit, man. He oh, really is a geopolitical um, Svengali of sorts. I mean, that's oh, what he taught. All the amazing and, uh, for those keeping score at home and taking notes diligently. Tonight's Scrabble word is Svengali. Svengali. Well, all the amazing work that Corbett's done over the years, like the most viral th- thing he ever did, it was that five minute like joke slash serious nine eleven one, five minute long. It's again because hey. it's a, it's a perfect piece of media. It is like you, it, you um, can, you can fuck around for 15 years and you'll end up creating one of those, but yep. you just will. It's, it's the but law of averages. It, it's so silly. It just got like resurfaced. Jimmy door all of a sudden he just saw it now. Oh really? <laughs> wow. Well, like, no, yeah, I let's mean, bring just... Corbett on Jimmy door. Let's see how YouTube likes that. No, he, he played the video. I, don't think he wants to lose his YouTube channel, his revenue. But we'll see. That was probably like four months ago, three months ago. He played that that exact video. Yep. You, know, you can't mention that's Corbett funny. Report and YouTube censorship and neglect to mention the fact that, to the best of my knowledge, Long before Donald Trump was deplatformed from Twitter and everything with big uh, flair, long before Alex Jones and his gay frog rants were um, deplatformed and knocked off the interwebs, to the best of my knowledge, it was the Corbett report that got booted from YouTube first. And the best part about it was no. Corbett called it for like, I'm talking about the people that I watch. Oh, you know. all right. I was just like, because Alex of, Jones was like 2017, and Corbett didn't, I, his I, YouTube channel I, didn't get nuked until like late 2020. Yeah, they but were fucking with him for a while. Yeah. For about, I want to I say remember the video years. that got him banned. Yeah. It was at least two years nonstop. For, yeah, it, it was at least for two years that Corbett kept saying, and I want to let my YouTube viewers watching, here's my website. Go here whenever they take my channel down. It's just a matter of time. And then finally, two years down the pike, they took the main channel. But they forgot about Corbett Report Extras. And so then I go over to Corbett Report Extras. He's like, hey, they already took the main channel down. It's only a matter of time before they take this one down too. And then it took about maybe two or three months. Hmm. And they wiped it out. And then boom. He just got that one back though. Oh Apparently. wow! Yeah, it's, just like yeah, it's, one day. He doesn't post. He's he's not posting to it though. No. It, they just like um, instant, you know, for no reason at all, just put it back out there because they're magnanimous and they don't have an agenda. I'm kind of glad I don't have the temptation of having the self censorship of having the YouTube channel anymore since I've been banned. Because like I'd never have to worry about like having somebody on or showing something or talking about something. I just I I don't worry about that shit. If you want to talk about some aberrant shit, six, you know, you want to talk about your furry friends and their uh, orgies, then you're you're gonna have a YouTube following and you're gonna get paid actual dollars off of it. I I believe mix it in with some cat videos at least. Yeah, well, as Catholic Corbett has said many times, the modern library of Alexandria is burning to the ground. Um, and the censorship has never been stronger and more pervasive. Um, my pro tip is when the black boot of fascism stomps on your face, try licking the boot and that way it'll slip off and you can get away. 
Well, you know, all those shitty movies that Hollywood remakes, and um, I, I never understood, but I do now kind of understand why they never remade that They Live movie. Like, I don't think there's lizards fucking ruled over us or anything, but just, uh, you know, subliminal messages and everything you're watching and uh, the power structures kind of got you by the balls if you uh, play in those fucking realms, I guess. Oh, my God. Um, so Death the Tyrant has sent a link in mm -hmm. the Rumble chat to the obscurest vinyl record uh, by Vito Lovejoy called I'd Really Like to Get in Your Pants Because I Just Shit in Mine, which brings me to the point. Is it's that Death really what it Tyrant. is? Yes, it's Death the Tyrant. All right, we'll definitely play it tomorrow crap. night, D. He gives me all this crap about I'm obsessed with poop. Because you are. Rob is obsessed with balls, and yet it's been Death the Tyrant from the chat nonstop tonight with balls, balls, balls. I know, I know. We covered poop, that before poop, you got poop. here. Um, if I, it's good thing I'm not paying attention to Rumble Chat, yeah. right? See, this is how I know he this. wasn't watching earlier, Rob. I busted I his I, I busted his balls like four days ago on the uh, AM Wake Up Telegram chat, and he finally responded yesterday. And I'm like, that was days ago. What, what are you talking about? He's a hardworking man. He's a hard. It's working. all jokes. It's all and it's jokes. a short song, like he said. I think it's. Uh, it's all love. One minute long. Wow, that is short. That's Just a short said. bust of the balls. But you know that's all it takes to bust if you're doing it right. All right. So last question I got for you guys. Uh, they just put out the list today of the best places to work in the United States. Yeah. How long is it going to take each one of you to apply at JP Morgan, the best employer in the United States? Uh, never. I, I've seen those ads and I've never even been tempted. I forget the comedian's name. But I, I remember the name of the special. It was called Shrimpin' Ain't Easy. And the idea behind the shrimping is, is that you take shrimp and you put them in like in air vents and shit all around a building. And just let them rot. Like hide them in places and have it smell like fucking rotting shrimp. Because that is a fucking potent smell. But shrimp paste, delightful. And if it's used right. But anyway. um. I would take that job to be able to shrimp the building and then quit. And no one would ever know except me. And I would laugh. Wow. That's so awesome. That just took me, that just took my buzz to a whole new level. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I worked with a guy who used to work for Citigroup. Um, it's like a DBI and he was telling me. Did he have about horns that. coming out of his head? No, nah, he, he got out of that gig. But uh, he's a real good dude, but he, he was saying that it's like slavery over there. They have very like high pressure demands on all their IT people. Oh, IT people. Before I forget. We all we all we all talk. We know who you motherfuckers are. <laughs> Six. Uh whenever you're up to it, buddy, yes. send me another DM on the uh Twixter there at the Elon Mosque where they all pray when he does his call from the minaret there. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, like we did before, you know, I think last time you threw me, uh, what was it? Um, Emerson Lake and Palmer, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer, I think butthole it was Butthole surfers. surfers. And then of course the Jimmy Rogers track, he protects, yes. um, and, uh, and so, yeah, sure. yeah. Throw me another, uh, a homework assignment so I can, uh, you know, finally complete this 200 level course here at the uh, sixth university of, uh, remixing. Check Thank out you. Kitty Russell's new song again. Bet My, uh, no, no, I, I was bad. really, really happy with how the uh, THC for Texas turned out. I'm yes. ready to do that again. And I like, I like this six mix that you did. I think out of the three or four variations of that song. I think the one that you named this six mix. Not oh, just the because 260? Yeah, that yes, was my yes. favorite. 260 too. mix. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> I'm that too fucking sexy for my Wawa shirt. part. You, you nailed that Wawa part. And then when the fucking butthole surfers come in, like the timing of it with the yeah. lyrics is just, it hits so fucking hard. That was slap. That slap. Like uh, that, but, 
I it actually raise. takes longer to make remixes than to do original music. Way longer. Like like the song I did, Ripple, Whipple remix, Ripple, yes. where it's about the skipping the stones. The song took me like not even an hour. The nipple mix. Um one. Ripple, ripple Nipple nipple's a good one too. I, there's like 13 remixes of that mm -hmm. song. And there will be a 14th Dead Fellas working on it. I think Dr. Dennis is gonna be on it too. Shout out um, to Deadfellow, uh, speaking of good mixing. But I was going to say, I will uh, send you homework assignment if you send me the tracks and let me mix it. Because I would love to take a crack at that. Yeah. Well, which tracks do you want? Oh, so, like, just send me the stems uh, of the mix. So, like, whatever tracks that you have, just mix them down to the stems and send them to me. And then oh, I'll, I'll import oh, okay. them into Studio One, and I'll I'll throw in some of the tools that I fuck with there. and see yeah. what i can do with it because i've never really mixed layers like that so that'd be fun that'd be a fun well experiment. see you know like as you may have noticed whenever i mix together i just take a little bit here and a little bit there i won't even use the whole song i won't even use all the parts i'll just take you know the bass guitar from this part rhythm guitar from that part i'll just use these vocals here then i'll rearrange it and normally i start with my own house track where i'll I'll smith together a new Detroit house track with some samples and stuff. And I'll get that thing laid out for the whole track so that I've got my bars and my time signature and everything and my key and all that set. Then I'll bring in whatever I'm going to use on top of it, whether it was the butthole or Jimmy Rogers or ELP or whatever. And, and, and that's the last stuff that goes on. And so when I bring that in, it's normally to just bring in what I think is the most important part. And again, it's all about the timing. But that way, the song itself just keeps going rather than the samples taking over the song, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. You want it to just flow when you're making a mix. It, right? It's a volume automation, like, autistic nightmare. But I'm gonna try and get through it without like getting caught up in the first 30 seconds for like eight days <laughs> of just automating the, the volume on everything. But yeah, man, I, I would really stay enjoy away that. from stay away from perfection. Go for I, great. Well, I'll tell you what, I, yeah, that you know. uh, the Doors track that I just got done remixing. Yes, it's got like um, two minute warning, gentlemen. Uh, you talk about stems and everything here. Stems. Oh, speaking of sticks and stems and things of that nature, um, I have an announcement to make. Uh, not only is Mob Rules coming to TMP this Sunday, uh, Cinco de Mayo, uh, but okay. and that'll be at 6 p.m. Eastern time, as we do things here, uh, and 8 a.m. fucking Harps time. Bless him for getting up early for this. But... Uh, not only will Mob Rules be on TMP on Sunday, but it will also be on the AM Wake Up channels too. So, What is Mob there. Rules? Oh, Mob Rules is the new podcast uh, with Tom Cooper and our friend Harps from Australia. So they will be getting together every Sunday to shoot the shit, uh, share music, possibly lots of punk and metal there. So for all you fans of that out there. And then, uh, yeah, just fucking around and maybe inviting some other people to come hang out too. But it'll nice. be a good Sunday hang on TMP now. So. Now, uh, what time is cool. uh, Harps and Coop going to rip that show? Oh, they're uh, they're doing it live uh, on at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, that's 8 a.m. Australia. Yeah. That's perfect because that's the right in between when Steve Poikinen does a slow news day. Yes around yes. lunchtime on Sundays. And that's also long before Richard Rich uh, kicks yeah. off the Mothership. Grand World Mothership show. On they picked Sunday. a good perfect, time man. Slot. That's a perfect Nine slot. 9.30-ish. Yeah. Ish. Yep. So it's, I, I think it's going to work out brilliantly. So I just wanted to throw that out there to everybody. Listening. So I'm going to send Hell you yeah. all 10 stems to Whiskey Bar. That I just down. remixed by the door, so you can get a get a back, uh, you know, you can get a back room look into the strange world of the Yona music. Yeah, so if you have like a Dropbox or something like that, just hit me with it. Yep, no problem. All right. Uh, oh, and of course, to everyone.